Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a virtual drag and drop system using OpenCV and Python. We will start from scratch and go step by step to create the complete project. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, then do check out our premium courses that are now available in packs. The link will be in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our PyCharm project and uh, we will go to File, Settings and the Project Interpreter and we are going to Add and here we are going to write CV Zone and we are going to hit Install, Install Package and then we will write Media Pipe and then we will hit Install again. Now I have already installed these because they take a while and all of these dependencies as well they will be installed automatically especially OpenCV and NumPy so these will be installed so the first thing we will do we will use the same file that is automatically generated and we are going to start with our webcam so we are going to import CV2 so then we will write cap is equals to CV2 dot video capture now we are basically following the same pattern that we did in our previous video. In the previous video we did the virtual keyboard where we used our fingers to click on different keys and then it simulated those keystrokes. So this is quite similar to that but instead of keystrokes we are going to drag and drop some boxes. So this could be later converted into a game, we could use images and uh, we could do lots of different things with this. So. Uh, we are going to keep the same concept. We are going to keep the size as 1280 and cap.set prop ID 4, which is the height, as 720. So this is 1280 by 720. This is our width and height. And then we are going to say while true, we are going to write success and image is equals to CV2. Uh, not cv2 cap dot read and then we will write cv2 dot i am show we will write that this is our image and we will write img and then cv2 dot wait key and we are going to give a delay of one millisecond so this is basically the boilerplate for our webcam and the uh, spelling for success are wrong we need to put another s so yeah that is about it so let's go ahead and try it out we are going to run this and there we have it so this is our webcam feed live and what we will do now is we will continue and find our hand so we are going to use the cv zone hand tracking module so we are going to write cv uh, not cv uh, we will write from cv zone dot hand tracking module import hand detector hand detector there you go and then we are going to write our hand detector let's say detector is equals to hand detector and we are going to make it a little bit harder to detect because we want uh, accurate measurements or accurate detection that's why we want it to be uh, 0 0.8 rather than the default which is 0 0.5 so this is the detection confidence so after that we need to find it in our image in real time so we are going to write here that our detector dot find hands uh, it is going to find the hands where it will find it in this image and it will return us the image after it has drawn so we can display it and then we will also grab the landmarks which we are going to use to find our finger point and based on that we are going to drag. So we are going to put all the information of this in our LM list and then we also have the bounding box which we can ignore. And then we, we are going to write detector dot find position and we want to find position of our 
uh, within our image. So basically this is for drawing, it will draw it on this and that should be fine. So yeah, so let's run that and see if we can find our hand and the finger, if everything is good, we can move on to our next part. And there we go. So you can see it is drawing and it is quite good and it is fast. Okay, so now we are going to write the script where we will have multiple of these rectangles and we can move them around based on our finger position. But what I like to do is I like to go step by step. So we will do it for one box at a time. And once we understand the basic concept, then we will just iterate it so that it is easy to follow. If I start with the classes and the four loops, uh, it might be a little bit difficult to understand. So what we will do is we will start with the very basic rectangle and then we will uh, increase it to different iterations, uh, as many as we like. Okay, so the first thing is to create a rectangle. So we will write here cv2.rectangle and we want to put it on our image and we are going to give it um, some random values. So these are, uh, let's say 250 and then to, or let's make it 300, 300 and 300. And then the color, let's put at 255, 0255, which is purple. And the thickness, we will write cv2.filled because we want it to be filled. Okay. So that being said, now this should display us our rectangle. So let's go ahead and look at that. So there we have it. So we have a nice rectangle. Okay, this is the problem. <laughs> Um, okay, we can fix this because it's, it's a little bit confusing when you are moving around, try to grab and place. So what I will do is I will flip the image. So it is not that hard. Image is equals to cv2.flip. Uh, why is it not showing cv2.flip? Is it not in cv2 or is it with a capital? Did I write? Oh, the spellings flip yeah <laughs> flip image and then we are going to give in our code uh, I believe it should be index one so let's try that it is I think the horizontal flip is one and the vertical flip is zero so yeah yeah there you go so now it will be easy for me to move around my left and right are same so what we will do is we will use this finger and the first thing we will do is we will check when this finger, when the tip of this finger is inside here. And we will put this on the center of our rectangle. And that will allow us to move it around. But uh, we don't want to grab it unless we click. So this will be our click. So when we click, then we will be able to move it around. Because otherwise, when you go to that position it will just keep moving and it will not be good so the first step will be to find this position this location and when it is in this box then we are going to do something right uh, we can change the color of the rectangle for example to see if we are in that region uh, okay so what we will do is we will first of all check if we have any hand okay so we will write if lm list if that is available, then we are going to do all of this stuff. So here we are going to check if our tip point is basically within our rectangle. So how can we do that? First of all, we need to find the point. So the point we can easily find in the LM list. So LM list at number eight is basically uh, your X and Y of the tip. So how do I know this? This is given in the media pipe library and we have discussed this in our previous um, tutorial as well. So I'm not going to go through that again. So once I have this position, I can basically store it in, let's say, I will call it cursor. So I will store it here in cursor and then I'm going to check if this cursor is between my values. So the what are these values? 
they are basically of the x and y of the rectangle and their width and height so uh, instead of putting these static values we can put dynamic values but for you to understand it properly we can still use the static values so for example i would say that my initial point is at 100 so i will start at if uh, the value is below 100 and it is uh, sorry it is above 100 and it is below 300 right so i will write it like that so the cursor at zero okay so that is basically the idea this is the x part and i will say that again it is from 100 this is from 100 to 300 and this is for cursor at 1. So this is for the y and this is for the x. If that is the case, then I can, let's say, change the color. So let's say my color is equals to, uh, color of the rectangle is equals to, um, let's say, green, 0, 2, 5, 5, and 0. So I will put that as the color. And by default, we have the color by default we have the color purple right this is just for testing we are not going to use it later on or we could like if you want to click and change the the color you can you can use that okay so we just need to replace this over here and now if it is within that region it should change the color so let's hope for that So there you go. So if my finger is here, you can see changes to green, but it's not going back to <laughs> purple uh, because we are not changing. We can say else, else color is this. So now it should go back. So this is my finger, bring it in, bring it out. So now I know that whenever I go in, it is being detected, the position is correct. So what's the next step? The next step is that we need to check if we have clicked or not. So if we click, then we are supposed to change the position of our rectangle, right? So that is the basic idea. So how exactly can we do that? So now we will have to move on to the dynamic values. So what we will do is we will not define the initial and the final position. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. Instead, what we will do is we will define the center point cx and cy, and then we will define the width and the height. And you will see why in a short bit. So what we will do is we will write here, we have cx is equals to cx and cy uh, which is equals to 100 and 100 and then the width and height are 200 and 200 so we can we can write it here in the same place what is happening okay we can write it here width and height so that will be let's say 200 and 200 so earlier we were writing the absolute position so it it was x2 and y2 but now we are giving the width and the height so we have to write the uh, value 200 200 why didn't it fix it what is happening there you go okay so then we are going to go down and here we are going to write in terms of cx and cy so this will be cx minus width divided by 2 and this will be cy minus height divided by 2 so then we are going to write the same thing but instead of minus width and height we are going to write plus width and height so from the halfway it is oh not this part this part plus so this would pretty much give the same effect so it will not change much so let's go ahead and try it out first and uh, actually, before we do that, we need to change the values here as well. So this was 100. 
uh, which was this is now our center point not the starting point so again we will have to do the same thing we will say that cx minus width divided by 2 and then this will be our final point so that will be plus width divided by 2 and the same thing will happen with the height so we will copy this part we will paste it here then we will copy this part and we will paste it here okay so oh that extended a lot we can bring it down and there you go see now the box is a little bit further because we are giving the center point not the starting point so if i go in now it works exactly the same but now we have dynamic values and what we can do is we can um, let's do an experiment let's just change the position of it so we will say that whenever the cursor is inside uh, our box then we will change the color and we will make the cx and cy equals to our cursor so it will bring it in the center and whenever we take our finger it will go there so it will not drop but it will drag so the dropping part we will fix later but for now we will write here that our cx and cy oh cx and cy are basically the cursor so this hopefully will put it in the middle part so let's try that out so if I move now you can see my finger wherever I take it it will follow that but I have no way of dropping it because for dropping I will have to just <laughs> run away you know which is not which is not the best way but i can do it but it looks so weird so uh, the idea is that now instead of dragging all the time we will drag only when we click so whenever we click we will drag and whenever we open the finger uh, unclick then it will drop so that will be more feasible uh, for this application so how can we do that so to do this we need to check whether we have clicked or not so when we are getting our cursor and when we are getting our lm list we need to find the distance between our fingers so here we are going to check uh, we have a function within our detector so we will write here find distance and we want to find the distance between the index tip, which is point number 8, and the middle finger uh, tip, which is point number 12. And we want to draw it on our image to see if we are finding the correct values. So, and we will return it to the length, which will be L, and the rest of the two parameters we want to ignore. So, let's run that and see if it works. So there you go so now you can see i can find the distance and whenever the distance is low it means it has clicked so we can print it here print the value of l and we can find when do we want it to click so there you go and at the bottom you can see we have our click and uh, we have our distance so i can see that uh, right about here I'm just trying to see it uh, measure it through my table so right about here when yeah maybe around here when it's less than 30 so I, I would say that is a click so I will write here if L is less than 30 then we are going to do XYZ so here we are going to push all of this if only we have clicked otherwise we are not going to move it 
So hopefully this will solve our issue that we had earlier uh, that we want to click and then drag. So here we are clicking but nothing is happening because we are not inside that part. When we go inside and click then we are able to drag and we are able to drop. So that looks quite promising. There you go. Uh, sometimes when the value is not enough it doesn't work but most of the time it works so i can see it i can move it and it, it is quite precise to be honest uh, i can move it and i can drop it easily and just slide it out so that's quite good now this is good for one rectangle and if i wanted to do it for another rectangle or a circle then it will be quite difficult to replicate this again and again and of course it will not be efficient, it will be hard coding. So what we need to do is we need to create a class and we need to update that class in order to update all the positions of these different rectangles. So what we will do is we will create a class here and we are going to call it, let's be creative, uh, let's call it drag rect. So we are only going to do it for a rectangle uh, later on, you can create your own class for a circle and maybe I will do a video on um, an image as well. If, if you want me to do that, mention it in the comments below and I will be happy to add that as well. So here we are going to write def and underscore underscore in it. This is the initialization. And what do we need? We need two things. So for each rectangle, this is the main information that we need. So the position and the size. So we are going to write here position, but uh, if you remember in our previous video, we wrote position when the position was the origin, x1, y1. So we will change it a little bit here. We will write here, let's say C, or let's, let's just write the whole thing, position center, because it will be easier to read. And then we have the size. So the size, we don't need to change anything here. And we will give it a default size of, let's say, 200 by 200, which we are already using over here. So, yeah, that should be fine. And as you know, what we have to do when we are creating a class, we have to write position center is equals to position center and self dot size. Again, if you don't know what this is, uh, I highly recommend that you... Uh, go through some tutorials about object-oriented programming and then come back uh, to complete this tutorial. Okay, and uh, then we are going to write here size. So this is only for the initialization and this is pretty much it uh, that what we require because here you can see this is our initialization that we are doing for one rectangle and this is the initialization that we are doing it for the class. So this is covered quite well. Now, the tricky part comes when you have to update. So what we will do is we will write here a new method and we will call it update. And uh, inside that, we need the point of our cursor. So if you remember, the cursor is basically lm list at eight. This information is coming from the detector. So we need to input this information here. So we will write here that this value is the cursor and once we have the value of the cursor, uh, we can we can find out the location and we can update uh, whether we are inside that position or not. So what we will do is this is the part where we check if we are inside the box or not. So we will remove all of this and we will put it here. And instead of doing all of that, we can remove the else for now. And what we will do is we will call this method. Uh, uh, actually, the calling part will be later on. So we can just comment here, call the updates here. OK, so that we don't forget. So here we are going to, first of all, we need to replace all these values that are giving us error. And the color we can ignore uh, for now. Later on, if you want to add, you can add it. So what exactly is the CX and the CY and what are the width and height? So these are based on our rectangle that we declared. So this information we already have from our class. 
uh, or from our object. So here what we will do is we will write cx and cy is equals to self dot position of the center and then we are going to write width and height is equals to self dot uh, size. So right away our errors are gone and now what we need to do is uh, we need to update the position of our object the rectangle that we have created if it is within our bounding box region so what we will do is we will say that uh, not our cx and cy our self dot position center will be changed to the value of our cursor if this is true so let me write here so you don't forget uh, if the finger let's say index finger tip is in the rectangle area or let's say rectangle region so if this is the case then change the position of our cursor uh, of our box but you remember that is not the only condition before this we need to check if it is clicked or not so that is already happening uh, outside this class so we don't need to worry about that so all we have to do now is we have to call this so what we will do is we will create a rectangle here so for example we will call our rect is equals to drag oh we need to put it down my bad so rect is equals to drag rect and we will give in the position as let's say 150 by 150 and the size is the same which is 200 and 200 so now what i can do is i can say rect dot rect dot update and i want to update it based on our cursor so the cursor again is the same value of the lm list 8 this is basically the index uh, index finger tip landmark okay so hopefully that is not confusing now um, now what we need to do is we need to draw these based on our new class values so we cannot just write here CX and W because they are not defined here so how can we get these values Without changing too much, we can simply write what we have written here. We can copy this part and we can paste it here. And we can write that our rect position center and our rect size. And then all of this is pretty much the same. So we can write here, this is to, uh, this is to draw. Yeah okay so i think that should be good let's let's go ahead and run it hopefully we'll get some good results okay so the the weird thing is nothing should change it should work exactly as before so if i click and yeah i can drag uh, and it can move so it means the class is working the update method is working the the initialization is working so all of these things they are working uh, as they should so we should not worry about that and now the best part is if you didn't understand why we were doing this the best part now is that we can replicate this as many uh, times as we want so here if i if i'm creating one rectangle i can now create five and all of them we can update at the same time so uh, how can we do that we can do that by writing a for loop so depends on how many we want so for example we can write 4x in range uh, till 5 let's say and then we are going to create these rectangles and we will put them in a list so we will say here rect rect list is equals to empty and we will say rect list dot append and we are going to append this here and each time we append we are going to add a little bit of value so we will not start from the same point 
so we will write here x so x multiplied by um, let's say 250 because the size is big and we will add initial value as well let's say 150 and the rest we can keep the same the height we can keep same if you want to change the height you can add the multiplication of x as well but uh, for this instance I don't want to change that okay so now we have five of these but we are not checking five of these we are not updating five of these so here again we will have to create a loop so we will write here for rect in a rect list we are going to go through that and again here we have to do the same thing for rect in rect list we are going to update that there you go so yeah that should be it so let's go ahead and see if we get five of these or is it just the one and the good thing is we don't need to program anything else we can just drag and drop all five of these um as we wish so by the way why is this i i don't like that we need to remove that okay so there you go we can move it around we can move around all five of them there you go oh here like this let me go back a little bit there you go and yeah I can move it around and I can drop it okay let me remove the, the drawing where is it this one yeah so let's say draw is equals to false I don't want to draw that okay uh, that is good and what else can we do so let's try it without that and then uh, the last thing we can do is we can make it a little bit transparent so that it is um, I don't know it looks better maybe so yeah so now it's fine and as I mentioned before it is precise so I can move it around you can see I aligned it exactly uh, together so let me try this again there you go almost like they are aligned this this is one problem that I haven't fixed yet maybe you can fix that too um, if you come too close it will become one one part yeah so this is an issue uh, maybe someone can fix this bug or because I'm thinking of creating a game out of this later on so probably I'll add some code to fix this as well okay so that is pretty much it and uh, yeah the last part which is the transparency uh, let me put the fancy rectangle first so i like to add the cv zone rectangle so here we will import cv zone import cv zone and then we will write here cv zone dot uh, corner rectangle we will give in our image and uh, then we have to give in the parameters which will be exactly the same so we will copy those and then uh, we will give the I think it is the length uh, or the thickness is it let me check um, this is supposed to be okay no this is supposed to be this is fine this is fine as well but this this is supposed to be width this is supposed to be width no brackets and this is supposed to be height again no brackets there you go so let me bring it back no bracket here so yeah so this is our third parameter so this is the first parameter this is the second one and this is the third one okay so this is basically the length and then we have the rectangle thickness let's put it at zero what happened here this was supposed to be 20 okay so let's run that and see if we can get the corner rectangle there you go so we are getting the corner rectangles as well now so I like to add that looks good uh, now the last thing we will do is we will do the transparency part and as I mentioned in my previous video the previous tutorial I found this code which allows us to add transparency so I'm going to hide this all uh, this is for solid draw solid and then 
here we are going to write for draw with transparency so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to copy that code that i found on stack uh, overflow and it, it is pretty much the same thing that we are doing here but we are masking and we are creating a new copy of the image and so on so this is our new image on which we are going to draw so we will copy all of this part which is only for drawing and we will push it in no no need to push it in we need to remove that uh, why is this giving an error? Because we did not include it. Imports NumPy as NP. There you go. So now we should not have any errors. And now we are going to draw it. Instead of our original image, we need to draw it on image new. And then this will be the copy of that image. Alpha value, let's put it at 0 0.5. Masking, print mask shape. Let's remove that. Uh, out mask and there you go so then instead of drawing the image we will draw the out image out so let's run that but again uh, my background is quite white so it might not show properly if you have a black background it will be much better there you go so here you can see the black ones they are fine but the white ones they are not so let's try it out we click, we move it around, there you go, we click, move it around, there you go, click, move it around, click, move it around, there you go, there you go. So now it looks more like, um, what do you call, Iron Man where he has his heads up display which allows him to uh, see all these different things it looks uh, it looks like uh, virtual reality so again uh, this is just the basics you can definitely optimize this it's not the perfect thing uh, but you can play around with it and uh, you can change the parameters you can add some uh, code that will allow us to solve these problems that we are facing uh, especially where we have an overlap but this gives you an overall idea of how this uh, drag and drop works. And let me know what kind of games would you like to create from this? Any ideas that come up uh, to your mind? Then let me know in the comments below and I will try my best to create these and create a tutorial for that. And I think it will be a fun thing to have it uh, on your portfolio as well. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.